I'm Mark Roenick. This week on Fishing 411, we're way up north in Berglund, Michigan at Timbers Resort. This is a land known for big snow and also something else big, but you're going to have to stick around to see what that's all about. You know, we had a lot of help on this particular adventure. Of course, myself and Jake were along for the ride, but we also had John Sibley. He had some clients that were here. He had some of his friends. He had John had his dad here. So we had lots of people spread out searching for these fish, and it really helped in our you know, ability to catch fish because they spread out over these flats. You can't all jump up in one spot and think you're all going to get large numbers perched. It doesn't work that way here. you got to scatter out um, and cover the flat as best you can. Uh, that strategy worked absolutely flawless for us. Well, we're out on Lake Ogibbic and we're going to give it a shot to uh, do a little tip-up fishing out here. It's, it is a tough bite. Um, you know, everybody out here says it's a real sensitive bite and that's what these tip-ups are geared for is really the sensitive bite system on them. Uh, we're going to try a couple different things today, see if we can't get something figured out with them. Uh, typically we do real well with perch, crappies, anything with a finicky bite, walleyes, um, they work phenomenal. They're a fully heated tip-up. So today I don't think we're going to need it when the sun comes out with the black box like that. They're, they're going to take care of themselves on their own. But uh, So then you're just going to put that split shot at the water's edge. And this is the, the drop flag I was talking about is you're just going to set that, re that flag on the reel peg. And then I've got a counterweight and I can virtually take all that to the point where it doesn't go up. So then what I'm going to do is just set that so it's just teetering. Okay, so now you can see just how light that fish. So when he when he comes along, all he's got to do is touch that thing, and the flag goes up. And then he's got a very free turning reel, so he's not feeling anything when he bites, and he's not feeling anything when he leaves. That's the whole key. This is our first fish on the graph. We're up here at Lake Gogebic, way over in the western end of the UP, and look at that. I just hooked up into my first fish here, and uh, John Sibley is our guide, and he's been helping us get on these fish. And, uh, ooh, ooh, look at here. It looks like I'm into my other line there, but we'll see if we can't get this. Oh, this is a toad. This is a toad. Look at that. <laughs> I'm like a little kid. That is an absolute stud of a perch. Let me get him unhooked here. Look at the belly on that thing. <laughs> this gives a whole new meaning to the phrase jumbo perch. My goodness, that is a beautiful start right here. <laughs> there we go. We got one coming up here. Oh, there's one. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, these fish are not big biters. Very, very subtle bites, and that's why we have these spring bobbers on. You know, I'm not a huge fan of spring bobbers, but I'm telling you what, for this style of fishing, you have to have them. I'm fishing on Lake, Lake Gogebic today. Whoa, <laughs> she just woke up. Fishing on Lake Gogebic today. And I tell you what, Lake Ogebic is known for monster perch. And we're just gonna get this girl's head lined up in the hole right here. We actually have one down there right now too. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at that. You know, this right here is why you come to Lake Ogebic. That is a gorgeous perch. And this is an average perch out here. You know, they get much bigger. Last year I came out here and I got one over two pounds. So that's what we're after. But I tell you what, no one can complain about a perch like that. The upper register of fish in here, my personal best is 2.8. Uh, there's a lot of fish every year caught out of here, two pounds. Um, that's a world-class fish anywhere. I mean, it's amazing fish. I mean, it's a, it's a different creature when you get into that kind of category of fish. But uh, the best time to come up here for that would be starting in late February, March through ice out. You know, we chase them pretty hard. and. You get some nice days where you can sit out and really be comfortable. Today, we don't have heaters running in our houses. It's just beautiful. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. T 
Peter Pig. Because he can settle down on the ice and he won't tip over. Alright, this is a nice big female as you can see. And she's healthy, she didn't blow her stomach, so we're going to release this fish. Put it back down the hole. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV. Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, he's on there. Get him. Push it back. Oh, push it back. There we go. There. Oh, man, this is a riot. We got these tip ups set out here just for an extra line. In the state of Michigan, we get three lines. So utilizing a tip-up is awesome. And this is a gorgeous fish, look at that. I actually just caught one inside the shack, looked out and we had a flag up. Now, that is a gorgeous fish. That one's probably pushing 11, 12 inches, just a really long fish. There's one. This is an awful lot of fun here. And you know, the weird thing about it is there's no such thing as a bad perch here. I'm like, go give it a look, here he is. Guy popped right up in the hole. Even the smaller ones that we're catching today have literally been toads compared to what you would get other places. That's why I kind of describe this as you know, an average fish or maybe even a little bit below average fish here. But the way I describe it, these are just, they're giving a whole new definition to the word jumbo perch. Man, we are having a riot here. Gotta get up a Lego gibbick and get you some of these big yellow bellies. And he's got this guy following it up right now. He just came back. Now this perch is the one that just came in, took a look at it, and left. Let's see here. He's right on it right now. That is awesome. There we go. Whoa, this is a big one. Oh my goodness. Let's get this other dead stick out of the way. This is a woo! Man, these fish absolutely pull super, super hard. I tell you what, this might be the hardest fighting fish in freshwater, I tell you. These are great, great fighting fish. Oh, look at that. So that is another gorgeous fish. I actually got into my other dead stick, looks like. I tell you what, you set the hook on these things and it feels like you got a 20 pound king salmon on. They are just a riot to fight. You know, the other thing about this insect or bug bite is it's not as active as you might imagine. Um, these perch will come in and they'll bite, but moving the bait aggressively, that's not the way to get it done. You have to move it very, very seductively. And what we'll do here is we'll show you a close-up of what, a, you know, what one of these little teardrops with a, with a bug on it looks like. But these things come up off the bottom naturally and they're just barely swimming there. And so that's what you're trying to imitate. You're trying to imitate a mayfly larva that just came up out of the bottom. So you definitely don't want to be jigging it up and down and up and down. What you want to do is just kind of vibrate it and just get it vibrating. And that seems to be uh, what's triggering these bites. This feels like a pretty good fish here. It's coming up. That's a dandy. That's a nice perch. That's a beautiful Lake Ogivik perch. Amazing fish. You gotta love it. Doesn't get much better than that, guys. Additional considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle and by Fishhawk Electronics. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. We used a guide on this trip and his name is John Sibley and John is renowned in this area for his ice fishing expertise. He's the guy that pretty much pioneered these big perch here on Lake Ogiebic. When I say big, I mean big. Wait until you see these images of these perch. Some of the biggest perch you'll ever catch anywhere are going to come from Lake Ogiebic. 
So the two rods that I have are both what I consider dead rods. What I mean by that is I'm not moving them. I got them in rod holders and sitting them still. On my graph, I have a regular style flasher and I have the LCD style screen. And the reason why that's cool is because on a regular style flasher, that's real time. If a fish comes in and leaves, then you can't see it anymore. But on an LCD screen, you got about 10 seconds to look back and see what that fish was doing and how it was reacting. So on my graph, I have three lines because I have one jig on my one dead stick and I have two jigs on my other dead stick. So I have three solid lines on my LCD screen and when I see a fish come in, another line will come up and it's very easy to see when you have a fish below you. So once a fish actually comes on the screen, what I do is I pick up my dead stick and I don't want to make a lot of fast movement. What I actually am going to do is just a couple small movements to try to get that fish to bite. These aren't super active fish, so we'll actually scare them out of the area if we're moving too much. I cannot believe how good this fishing has been today. I've got another one on here. This one came on my, on my dead stick and I had him in the hole and jigging him with my regular rod. And you think I could get him to bite the regular one? Nope. This one didn't want it jigging. This one wanted it dead and uh, just sitting there still. And, uh, and that's the way it goes sometimes. So you have to be prepared to go with both. You know, the beauty of fishing in Michigan, you get three lines. You know, I can have a tip up out, I got a dead stick out, and I'm jigging with a third line. That's the best of all worlds. So I'll tell you what, that is another toad perch. It don't get no better than Lake Gogebic. Feels like a really decent fish, actually. Pretty decent. Not a bad perch. Midday here. Pretty decent one. Pretty fish. <laughs> We're having a fair day today. It's been uh, uh, going okay, but this last cold front shut them off a little bit. So, God, it's nice to see some life. It is pretty exceptional out here. So we're marking quite a few fish and actually catching quite a few, so it's a pretty cool day. I'm gonna go ahead and put another bug on here and get this ready to go back down the hole. Most people would think that these jumbo perch would require a tremendous forage base, and actually it does, but it's not the forage base you might imagine. The best perch fisheries up here in the ice belt tend to be not necessarily lakes that have a lot of minnows, but lakes that have a lot of aquatic insects. Now here in this lake, it's mayfly larva. Mayfly larva is number one. It's most important forage for these perch. Uh, but other lakes in the ice belt have different kinds of aquatic insects. Like for example, you may have heard of, um, in North Dakota, you may have heard of Devil's Lake, famous for its perch as well. What they have there are scuds or freshwater shrimp. But again, it's an aquatic insect that these perch are eating. We are asking, how can these little tiny insects be enough to grow these perch? The protein, um, and the food value that you find in aquatic insects is extremely high. Plus, there's millions of them in the system, and so these perch don't have to work very hard to get their food. Now, don't get me wrong, if a minnow swims in front of one of these big perch, they're gonna eat it, okay? They're opportunistic. But minnows aren't the critical forage here that grows these big perch. It's the aquatic insects that make it happen. Additional considerations provided by Mustang Survival. We save lives for a living. Additional considerations provided by Eagle Marine Service, a full-service StarCraft and Evinrude dealer. <laughs> I was just eating a snack. I got Twizzlers in my mouth here. Man, that fish just came up and rocketed up off bottom. Whoa, man, these fish pull so hard. So hard. I tell you what, oh, look at that. That's a gorgeous. Gorgeous perch, look at that. Oh my goodness. Now this right here, this jig that I got him on is a tungsten tubby jig. Let me pull this off here for you so you can see it a little better. There we go. Let's get this perch out here so you can see him there. Oh, that's a gorgeous perch right there. And this one right here, this is what we got him on, is a tungsten tubby jig. Now this one's made by VMC. And I talked about that a little bit earlier. This is a white one. And the white has seemed to shine a little bit better here today. I actually got another one down there right now, but we're gonna let that one go just so we can take a second and look at how beautiful that fish is. Man, I love it. I love Lake Gogebic. This is awesome. You got a fish mark? Yep. Yeah. Pretty good on it. This is 
one of my guides up here. He's fighting a fish. Rare chance that he even gets the fish. He's usually pretty busy dealing with all the clients and stuff. So, um, but he's hooked up here. Let's see if he can get something going. Looks like a pretty decent pretty fish, good. Mark. That's a decent perch. No, this is what we're targeting to eat in Gogebic. We're trying to let the big females go, but this is a perfect eating fish right here. I mean, just 10, 12 inches long, nice male, not hurting the lake at all, taking a few of these. Oh man, hey, these tip-ups have really added a little dimension to our fishing today, haven't they? Yeah, they sure have. And uh, they've produced a couple fish, and, uh, Let's see here. and that's always a good thing. Feeling resistance? Yep, there he yeah. is. All right, all right. Those tiny little <laughs> hooks on these things, you gotta be careful with them, don't you? Yeah, you do. They do a really nice job, though. I've been pretty impressed today. This looks like another good eater we got coming up here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Tip up action on perch, man. Look at that, that's a beautiful that fish right awesome, there. That is awesome, Dad. That's another gorgeous perch. Man, Gogebic is a pretty awesome fishery, huh? Yeah, I know, and, and believe it or not, that's one of the smaller fish that we've caught, but uh, still, that is exactly the size that we want to eat, and that's kind of what we're looking for right now. We've got our fish, our big fish that we were looking for, um, representative, and now we're just looking to have a few to take home to eat. So yeah, that's definitely. a good one. That is awesome, Dad. That's about as small a treble hook as I've ever seen, a number 20. I, I don't know if they make them any smaller than that. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you gotta wear my glasses to tie that one on. <laughs> You know, so this one's obviously a male, right, Dad? Yep. I mean, there's, we've had a couple mixes of females and males rolling around here today, and you definitely know the females this time of year. They got big, fat bellies, and these males are still big fish. They're just long. They don't have them big guts on them. Yeah, and that's going to happen, you know, and then that's also if a person that wants to eat perch, obviously, you got a choice in your mind here. If you catch a big female and you want to release it, that's a cool thing. You can do that because they're easy to tell that they're females and then keep the males to eat. And kind of like our ice fishing adventure down in Lake Erie, the females were really easy to tell because they were just, you know, balled right up with eggs. So. Well, that's awesome. Well, let's go get some more. I'll get this one set back up again, and we'll give it a shot again. Cool, thanks. Nice job, Gibbs. Cool. Thanks, Dad. You know, we talked a little bit earlier about aquatic insects and how important they are for perch. Well, what part of the lake has these? Well, when you're looking for aquatic insects, you're actually looking for soft bottom areas. Now, most of the time when we're ice fishing, we're looking for hard bottom areas, structure, if you will. But mud flats are where you're gonna find aquatic insects like mayfly larvae. So what you're looking for are big, expansive flats. And that's the reason why our group of guys here aren't sitting all on one spot. We're all scattered out over the flat. That way, we're not all fishing the same fish. So when you get on these flats, you gotta spread out a little bit if you're gonna be successful. Pretty fish. What we're going to do here is a little reality check. We've got a digital scale here, and we're going to go ahead and weigh one of the nicer fish that we caught today, just so people can see exactly how big these fish are. I've been perch fishing my whole life, and true one pound perch are pretty darn rare. And I think you're going to be impressed when you see what this one is. That's zeroed, so we were zeroed. One pound, 12 ounces. <laughs> Takes a lot of fish for two pounds. That's that's amazing, and uh, and still, when I look at the rest of the fish that we kept today, even the smallest fish that we kept would be an easy one pound. Would you agree? Oh yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. I mean, God, that's a beautiful fish anywhere. I mean, it's these are tough to come by. They are it's definitely tough to come by. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, one of those bucket list things that you got to do at some point in your life. You got to make your way up to like give you. You got to look up John, and you got to go get yourself a monster perch like this. That is true. I've been saying all day is it puts a whole new phrase to the word jumbo perch. These are beyond jumbo perch. Hey, my name is Mark Romanak. Thanks for tuning in to Fishing 401. You know what? You're never going to find better perch fishing than you'll find up here at Gogebic Lake. If you come up this direction, check out Tim Long. He's got an excellent place called the Timbers Lodge. It's going to set you right on these fish. And if you're looking for a guide, you just can't beat John Sibley.
There he goes.